Hello everyone, welcome back for more Let's Play You Don't Know Jack the Ride. Yodeling talent into a career. Branson. I imagine Switzerland's even tired of it by now. Let's go to Silver Dollar City. Greetings. I hope you enjoy your ride today. How many people will be playing? Just one player? I mean, great. Only one player. Is this your first time on the ride? Nope. Welcome back. We may tease you a lot, but we've got you on the spot. Welcome back. Now I will ask you to type in your name. See if it'll actually let me. How gracious of you. Thanks. I need to remind you that your buzzer is the letter <laughs> B. Well, that's all I have to say. Hope to see you at the bottom. I had to do it, folks. We're up in the 400s? Wow. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture Down in the collide. Anyway. Eh. This episode of You Don't Know Jack, The Ride, is brought to you by... The American Council on Rural Stereotypes. We ain't no different from y'all folks. You hear? And now, please welcome your host, Josh Schmidt. What makes you think Okie Talk Well, howdy, y'all, and welcome to Branson. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. It hurts my throat. Saddle up and let's ride. They actually hit that buzzer and grab the high belt. There you Ow. go. Try this category. The king of Branson, Missouri. Wrap your head around this. If singer Andy Williams built his Moon River Theater to resemble the Moon River from the song of the same name, what might be true about his theater? It would be bad and rising, it would be dark on one side, it would be blue, or it would be wider than a mile. His theater would be wider than a mile. And with my luck, I'd have seats in the back row. I'm still... Buzz in for the box, baby. They have an entire episode Isn't about Branson? Call... Look at the knobs on Branson. Hey, did you know that there's a show in Branson called the Bald Knobbers? Can somebody tell me what kind of freaks go to this place? Well, check this out. If the Bald Knobbers Jamboree actually featured the historical Bald Knobbers, what would fun, loving audiences be able to watch? Bank robbers, vigilante executioners, lewd sex shows, or cannibals? An entire episode about Branson, Missouri? Really? I... Why didn't you pick this one? The original Bald Knobbers were a group of vigilantes who forcefully restored order in the post-Civil War Branson area. And they did it all with their big swinging There, is that what you were waiting for? You've been thinking about it since the beginning of the question, haven't you? I'm still thinking about how you make Branson an entire episode. All right, looking good, looking healthy. Here's your category. Them fancy vittles. Well, I'm sure that if you've ever been to Branson, you've seen the down-home antics of the Presley family in their show called Presley's Jubilee. No. Well, suppose the Galloping Gourmet attends Presley's Jubilee. Considering the culinary meaning of Jubilee, what might he expect to see on stage? A group of silly chaps cut into long strips. A few odd young fellows on the half shell. Several strange blokes in flaming brandy. Or some ridiculous gets covered in hot sauce, yes? Cherry's Jubilee is on fire. Just like Flambe, Jubilee is something that's drenched in a liquor like brandy and then lit. Of course, in Branson, they just use Budweiser. And the the burn that one. On this one. Roadkill, dead ahead. Ow, cheap bonus for roadkill. Darn it. Don't forget, when you see the answer that unites the pair now. of items on the screen, go ahead Branson, and buzz in. Really? And we got a bonus question at the yeah. end that could mean even more cash. All right, let's step on Get it. Get over it eventually. Rob Petrie's boss, Brady, and Thick Canadian. What do these two items have in common? Alan. The Duke and Garth's party time fun. Wayne. Alan. Wayne. Bullish, Blight Lynch, and Love Boat Baldy! 
actually don't know this one. Meryl. Oh, Meryl is okay. And Kirsten's replacement. Jay. Soft crowbar and he crack corn. Jimmy. Are we just all doing first names? I mean, really? Is that... brother and godfather Reed. Bonus, what do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all the Osmonds? The Walking Kids? No. The Dog Robbers? Our Traps? The Jackson Five? New Kids on the Block? Dog Knobbers? The Vine Traps? I don't know. Ah, what did you run out Probably of Probably the Osmonds. Center. Check out your score there, make sure everything's in order, and we're moving on. Buzz in and tell me how much the next question's gonna be. Coming at ya. Somebody stuck him with a hook. Hey, you can't argue with $3,506. You get a right answer, it's all yours. Buckle up. Say entertainer Mickey Gilly takes ill. Lee, and has to be replaced by a guild animal in his stage show. Which of these will audiences not see? A tadpole singing window up above, a seahorse singing stand by me, a dolphin singing a room full of roses, or a shark singing you don't know me. Yeah, dolphins are mammals. <laughs> dolphins are mammals. They don't have gills or a sense of rhythm. Yeah, some of them All right, buzz in and get your money's worth. The category's gonna be... It's always darkest after the Tony Orlando and Dawn. Look no further, here's your question. If singer Tony Orlando were the lead character in Virginia Woolf's novel Orlando, which of these songs might he add to his lineup? I'm in the mood for lunch. I'll be a woman soon. My old black magic or Unchained Melanie. In Virginia Woolf's Orlando, the lead character is a male for two centuries and then becomes a woman for two more. And Tony would close his set by singing Tie a Yellow Garter Around the Old Oak Tree. If you know what I mean. Let's not think about that. Hit that buzzer and try to snag the highest value you can. This category is... Please, sir, may I have some more, OJ? Yep, they no. got everything in Branson, M.O. Hell, even the orange juice queen Anita Bryant can still pull in an audience. Anita Bryant led a campaign in the late 1970s called Save Our Children. From whom or what did Ms. Bryant feel our children needed protection? Hunger, abuse, illiteracy, or homosexuals? What illiteracy? No, but Anita is now joining the fight against illiteracy with bumper stickers that say, if you can't read this, you must be a Democrat. <laughs> hey, if you got a minute, take a look at this. Back in 77, a county in Florida passed some laws protecting gay rights, so Ms. Anita Bryant, mouthpiece of all that is good, spearheaded a protest campaign called Save Our Children. So our children huh. might be injured, illiterate, and hungry, but hell, at least they'll never be open-minded. That would just be Black horrible. Buzzer, we'll find Bingo. Branson is a happening place located in the Ozarks. O Z A R K O Z A R K. This message brought to you by the Branson City Council. <laughs> yeah, Branson is your place. Yeah. Welcome to the Ozarks. Have you met my sister? Remember to hit your buzzer. Oh. The first letter of the answer lights up. That's how you win Don't the cash. Don't do that, dude. Collect all five letters, and I'll give you the bonus. I was about to take bonus. a drink. Okay, ready, set, do it. State just south of Missouri. Arkansas. Stringed instrument runs with slither. Slither? 
Okay, that was one of the worst choices I've seen. Here's your category. You haven't been watching the last few episodes, Pulling have train. you? Time for the trivia. You've been hosting. If Boxcar Willie rolled boxcars while playing craps, what would he have? Two twos, two fours, two fives, or two sixes? Boxcars. When you're playing craps, boxcars are double sixes on your first throw. So tell me this, if you're playing craps, do you have to wear special underwear? You know, on your caboose? Hit the buzzer for the value on this one. You chose wisely. You want some trouble, my friend? You got it. Let's get into a dis or dat. The name of your dis or dat category is a hit. I'll give him a hit. Now, I'm gonna read off the names of seven wacky songs, and for each one, I'd like you to tell me if it's a Jim Stafford song or a Ray Stevens song. I'll know some of these. Cash in I used to listen to right Ray Stevens. Lose some cash for each one you get wrong or don't get Then two. it became this... You gotta get all seven of them very, in very seconds. political. Let the magic begin. Hello. My girl Bill, Jim Stafford... Have the A rap. Spiders and snakes. The streak. Guitars and I ain't cheering, cheering. I got stoned and I missed it. Six out of seven, not bad. Maybe that not was the camping song I thought of. Check out your score there. Make sure everything's in order, and we're moving on. No, okay, I was thinking of the camping Hit that song. buzzer and grab the... Very nice, respectable. This one's called... Hi-yo, Silver Dollar City! Away! You know, you don't have to waste your cash on music and shows in Branson. No, no, there's plenty of crap to spend your money on at the nearby Silver Dollar City Amusement Park. Mm -hmm. If Silver Dollar City adopted as their official mascot one of the people who have been featured on the U.S. Silver Dollar, who would be plastered all over billboards and t-shirts? Paul Revere, Jefferson Davis, Dwight D. Eisenhower, or Neil Armstrong? Before Susan B. Anthony, there was President Dwight D. Eisenhower's big, bald knobber. Welcome to Silver Dollar City, everyone. You where just we had to bring up bald Branson, numbers again, didn't you? And we love you? Ike, and Ike loves Branson. Buzz in for the bucks, baby. Here's a little something I wow. call... Wow. Terrible. When Minnie Pearl isn't as good as you remember. You know what I like about country good? music? The performers know how to put on a really big show. And the fans know how to put on really big hats. If your 10-gallon hat could actually hold 10 gallons of liquid, which of these is the maximum amount you could throw on stage during a lousy performance? 10 quarts of tomato juice, 20 quarts of creamed corn, 40 quarts of rancid milk, or 100 quarts of rat urine? Four quarts to a gallon. One gallon is four quarts, so 10 gallons would be 40 quarts. Big money, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. No oh, neither, I guess. Oh well. Yeah, I was gonna make that joke sometime. Good euphemism for clue, right about now. Here's your hint. Now that's sudden. Here's your clue. The Branson Guide to Curse Words. If it'll help you, imagine your El Camino just got stuck in the crick or something. Dark. 
darn it. Gee golly. I... I... Uh. Okay, it was gee whiz, but still... I shouldn't have called that. By gum. Or by golly. I shouldn't have called that. Shits. Dag nabbit. Thank you, deceased crap. No. No, gone it. Double hockey sticks. Hey, I live here. Yeah, seven for seven. You really kicked your own ass there, didn't you? The fact that it let me get away with that name and didn't kill me for it. Huh. Anyway, your home and take care, folks. Appliances? I will see and you back next time for more. House of used Until then, right, enjoy Leo. some commercials. Travesty of shaved electric bacon in my short. We've got blenders, lots of blenders. Crazy Leo, tell them about our blenders. My toothbrush is littered with people walking their damn dogs. We also have air conditioners for your home or office. I can hold 80 Lincoln head pennies in my mouth, you idiot! Come on by this Saturday, and the kids get free balloons and a chance to sit on Crazy Leo's lap. In my day, you danced with your pants on your head if you wanted to get a young girlie's attention. Whoa, easy there, Leo. That gown's open in the back. We're over here in Merkin Market Square, right next door to Mad Manny's Mattress World. Right, Mad Manny? F*** you. Whoa, that Manny sure is mad, and Leo sure is crazy. How come everything tastes like jello to me, gravy boy? In other news, three out of five celebrities agree that war is bad. Learn more tonight. Time now for a page from the success journey with motivational speaker and full-time dreamer, Dr. Harvey Bass. Let me tell you the story of a small farm boy from Alaska. He grew up in poverty, often cold, often hungry, many times forced to eat his own hair for sustenance. His father, a proud man, eked out a living raising caribou and selling their hooves to be made into pencil erasers. The father expected his son to take over the family business. Well, this bright, ambitious boy had a different idea. He had what I like to call a dream. The boy, at the tender age of 12, rented a car and drove from Alaska to a small island off the coast of Florida. There, he fulfilled his dream of growing a beard, smoking big cigars, and talking in a funny accent. Yes, that man is better known to you and me as billionaire entrepreneur and respected world leader, Wilford Brimley. This has been a page from the success journey with Dr. Harvey Bass. So you think you know sous chef? You and your other yuppie spawn friends think you know sous chef? Well, you don't know sushi at all, not a wee bloody bit. Oh, oh, you can sit in your fancy $70 a plate sushi cafes and impress your other human scabby friends and order California roll and think you're the sheep's wool. Well, you're nothing. You're sushi juniors and you make me sick. So from now on, you order sushi the real way, the proper way. You get McLeod sushi or you don't eat it at all. McLeod's only uses real haggis. None of this simpy wimpy fish snot. We only use haggis. Good Scottish men's haggis. And if you know it's good for you, you'll eat it too. So stop being a baby doll freak loser and leave that hair moose alone because you're eating McLeod sushi from now on. This Friday, the Home Entertainment Channel brings you Catholic Confessions. Hear and see the deepest secrets of these faithful churchgoers through the use of hidden cameras in a confessional booth. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Could you please speak up and lean back slightly? Watch as these hell-bound sinners make a break for heaven. Well, I... I covet my neighbor's wife. And does she covet you back? These priests have heard it all, and now so will you. These are some of the most original sins ever. Could you describe these impure thoughts? Explicitly? Please, it's important. Remember, 
If they weren't guilty of something, they wouldn't be here. Friday on AGC. Everyone, we have a guest today. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, hello, my name's, uh, Hugh Rection. Mm, Mr. Rection, this is a safe environment. Tell us your full name. Fine, it's Hugh G. Rection, all right? But, you know, I never use the G. Hi, Hugh G. Rection! Oh, hi! Hello, my name is Mike Hunt, and I'm one of thousands of people who've suffered through life with an unfortunate name. But finally, there's hope, thanks to Merkin Counseling Centers. When I first came to Merkin, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, it's always scary when I tell people my name is Ivana Tinkle, but I had no idea I'd be in a group with a Jack Meoff or a Buster Cherry um, my, or my a My name Anna is Lins. Harry Balsack. I'm Eileen Dover. I'm Eileen's husband, Ben Dover. Hugh Jazz. Hello, my name is Jacques Strap. Anita Get Laid. We're all equal. All of us are equal. Every one of us. IP Daily. I'm a hog. Howard M. Mellons. Jenny Talia. I'm Seymour Butts. Tara Hamstring. Dick Hertz. I own a dildo. Merkin Counseling Centers. If you have an unfortunate name, don't murder your parents. Get some help. Tonight on the Nature Channel, don't miss part two of the critically acclaimed documentary, Ducks. <coughs> Part 2 of Ducks, tonight at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, only on the Nature Channel. Next week on Hallie McNeil, Hallie opens up about her maternal instincts. Hallie, I had a really nice time tonight. Oh my god, what the hell is that? Oh, that's just the dancing embryo. He shows up whenever I feel my biological clock ticking. It looks like a sick tadpole. I know, isn't he cute? Well, I guess it's just you and me, dancing embryo. Hallie McNeil. Mondays. This week on the James Brown Celebrity Scrabble Tournament, the Godfather of Soul takes on former child star Rusty O'Dean. What? 57 points! H-W-U-N-A-W-U-H? What? That's not a word. Get a minute. Jump back. Come on. This is a word. I did what I did. Tuesday after Hallie McNeil.